I do humbly pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my hope this morning that you see a theme running through the lessons, an unmistakable theme, God's mercy. We see it at the beginning with Exodus, where Moses intercedes on behalf of the people of Israel as they're about to worship a golden calf instead of worshiping God. The wrath of God is there, and Moses intercedes, pleads with God that he would deliver them from their brokenness. He is the mediator in this story, which is a precursor to Jesus. And so the second story that you hear in the gospel are really two, and I would add a third. If you notice in the gospel, there's two stories about being lost. First is the lost sheep, then the lost coin. And what you don't read that is just follows beyond this is the prodigal son. The son that was lost and comes back to be greeted by his father. And so you have three stories, three parables, only two of which are told today. In our situation, we are asked to place ourselves in the parables. Both parables talk about sheep that are lost, one sheep that is lost, one coin that is lost in a household, and how the shepherd scours the countryside looking for that one lost sheep. But before I get ahead of myself, let me just say that the opening words are absolutely paramount to these parables. For it says, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. All the sinners and tax collectors. They were outside the margins of society. They weren't accepted, nor did they want to be accepted. They had been themselves self exposed moved away from that body called Judaism. If you look at the story closely, we see that there's Pharisees and scribes grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So they're at a distance. They're watching this man named Jesus and he's welcoming the sinners and the tax collectors. And they have this pious sense that they're not part of the riffraff. They're excluded from this story. And so they can throw sanctimonious stones at Jesus and say, look who he invites into his company. He even eats with them. And with that, they scoff Jesus. And with that, he tells two parables. Two very important parables about the mercy of God. And again, if you read the first parable closely, the shepherd leaves the flock in the wilderness and goes after the one hundredth that is lost. If you look at that closely, it doesn't seem to jive with our behavior. Would we leave 99 in a wilderness to go after one? But that's the way of God. That's the way of our Lord Jesus Christ. His primary mission was to those that were sinful. 
to those that were on the margins of society, to those that had no part of being in a just society. And he went after them particularly to show the mercy of God. And in this parable, you see that he scours the countryside looking for that one lost sheep. And when he does, that shepherd brings together his friends and family, rejoices that one is lost. Not the 99 that are righteous, but the one that is lost. And then with the woman who loses one silver coin, she has, would have had 10. One is lost in her home, as much as it was a home back in the day. And she sweeps and scours to find that one lost coin because that coin was valuable to her. It meant her life because one coin represented more than a day's wages. And so her margin of error was very thin for her. And so she scoured her home for the lost coin. It is often the task of you and me to find ourselves in this parable. In these two parables, where do we find ourselves? Are we part of the 99 left in the wilderness? Are we the one sheep that is lost? Or are we the shepherd? Now, Episcopalians aren't good at this, but how many think of themselves as shepherds? See, nobody raises their hand. I mean, really? We're polite. Really, we're polite about this. How many upon occasion um, see ourselves as the 99 righteous sheep? Oh my God, two hands, one, three hands, one up, four, okay. This is not a wave, this is... How many see yourselves as mostly righteous? God, I made it easy. Okay, I'll pick on myself. I see myself as mostly righteous in that kind of context. Because in the day... Jesus associated himself with those that were beyond society. It's the people we see that we wish we didn't see. People that we hope don't meet, but are out there. People like you and me that have consciences, that have lives, that have feelings, that have all the things that make up who we are as individuals. And Jesus went after them and so I would say to you that if we've ever been in that wilderness experience of our lives, if we've ever felt lost, I mean profoundly lost, Even if you're surrounded by friends and family that you feel profoundly lost and alone and rejected, even of your own will and testament, if you find yourselves upon occasion not living up to the standards that Christ has lived that has asked us to live, if we find ourselves looking the other way, then perhaps we are, and this parable is important for us. Because Jesus asks us to see ourselves in this story. He asked us to find ourselves 
and be honest with who we are as individuals, privately, alone, in the corners of our own life. And so I'm going to raise this up to you, that I think sometimes we are the lost sheep. And sometimes we are the 99 that seems secure. And I believe sometimes we are the shepherds. We are that person that Christ has dignified, that we go out into the world representing him into the world. And so, yes, on occasion, we are the shepherds. A number of years ago at St. Albert's Episcopal Church, Palm Harbor, Florida, where I was rector, we had a 10 a.m. service like this, and sitting way in the back, about 15 pews way in the back was a young man uh, who came to church for eight weeks. And he came and sat in the back of the pew. He came always uh, after the processional, and he always left before the recessional. Eight weeks. And he never came for communion. But he did hear the confession of sin. And he did hear the absolution. It was my task during those weeks to find him. And as the service ended, I would scurry even beyond the doors of the church looking for him in the parking lot. Not that I would have anything profound to say to him. Not that I would ask anything of him. But that I would reach my hand out and shake his hand and say, welcome. I'm glad you're with us. Because I've discovered over the years that strangers tell us the strangest things. I'm a guy that um, if you ask me to talk to a lamppost, I can do that pretty well. Uh, my family is embarrassed because I ask people how they're doing. I ask them if they like their job. And the strangest things about strangers is they tell the dangest things to you. Have you noticed that? If you let it happen, they'll probably tell you more than you ever thought possible. Is there a way in which we can make space for those kinds of folks, even for a minute, even for a brief handshake, even for those moments that where you want to get on with your life, because I think we all have those moments in our lives when Christ asked us to be shepherds, not in a way where you take the hook, the shepherd's hook, and bring them into church, but being very sensitive to another human being with your Christian values in place and saying, I honor you with your life, even if it's for a moment. It may mean all the difference in the world for another human being. And so many of us come here weekly and we do hear, and we do say the confession. We do hear the absolution. And equally important, we come and share the very body and blood of Christ that nourishes our lives. That gives us nourishment to be the shepherds of the world. 
It gives us nourishment and humility to say, yes, upon occasion, we are the sinners. We are the sheep that's lost. And then upon occasion, we realize that we're part of the body of Christ here and how much a blessing that is that we have one to another. I mean, when I look out, I know where you all sit. I know when you're not here, mostly. But you're all related to one another through the body of Christ. What a blessing that is. What a blessing it is to know of God's mercy. For there are some beyond these walls of the church that have never experienced love or mercy or care that we can give. It is a blessing that God has shown us mercy. And what should we do? If we've received that mercy, we should give it back. No, not back, forward. Give it forward. I know it's easier said than done. But I have to believe and trust in the power of Christ in my life and in yours. That in Christ and the Spirit moving through us, doing infinitely more than we could ever imagine. Not so much what we say, but the attitude we have we move into the world. Today is about God's mercy. May we have the courage to share it with a world that desperately needs us.